Here's one, because here's another one. Here's another one. Might talk myself into a side I didn't want to take. Carolina, UCLA. All right, let's go. I really went deep on this one. Newbie, clear some time here. Here we go. Clear some time in the timestamp. Now he's now he wants to go deep, newbie. Do you believe this guy? I mean, what have we been doing? With the run time says 40 minutes, nah, 42 minutes already. Dig in. Three minute, three hour podcast here. We're digging in. There's not Shot many clock games violation this. coming. I'm go throwing ahead, every yeah. number I've got at you. I, I can't take him into the off season. I'm giving you every number I've got. Here we Let's go. Let's go. Okay, so what do I do with UCLA? They fit the profile, that analytical profile of teams that win a national championship. It's yes. UCLA. They've got offense. They've got defense. They've got what you want. They've got a coach that's experienced, knows what he's doing. you got a group that has obviously been there before. There's a yes. lot to like about UCLA. One quick big asterisk. Jaquez, is he hurt? Is he playing? I mean, he's hurt. Yeah. How hurt? Yeah. How much is that affected? That concerns me. I'll get to that in a minute. What's UNC doing here? This was a middling team that we didn't say much about until they ruined Coach K's senior night yep. and then started rolling in the tournament. And now everybody's yep. going, oh, this is like the Michael Jordan, Sam Perkins, <laughs> James, Worthy, James Worthy Carolina team. They're yep. pretty good. They're yeah. pretty good. Okay, here's the numbers. You ready? I mean, you see my hat. The hat's not bad either, right? I, I know. Like you're, yeah, I think yeah. I know where you're going. All right, mm-hmm. here we go. Mm-hmm. Here we go. UCLA, this should, this, you, you like this for your hat. UCLA is a below average transition defense team. So Ooh, UNC wants Carolina. to run big advantage Carolina. Yes, they do. Yes. UCLA, for being top 15 defensive efficiency, Yes. is not good. In fact, they're poor against mid-range jumpers. Guess who's one of the best nationally at the mid-range jumper game? Tar Heels. Carolina. Tar Heels. So that's two big advantages. Carolina wants to go, and UCLA is not good in transition defense, and Carolina should be able to get some two-point looks, and over the course of the season, they have hit those. All right, now go to the other side. When UCLA has the ball, we know pace. They're going to want to slow it down more. Yes. Now, do. when they get into transition, they're very, very good. In fact, they're rated excellent. So okay. if they want to run, they can. Okay. And against UNC, you probably should be able to a little bit. Okay. Because that's a below average defensive team in transition is Carolina. They're not going to okay. guard you. UCLA should be able to get some threes against this team. Can they step out and make threes? Carolina is below average in guarding the three-point line. So do you trust Carolina's transition in two-point game versus UCLA's overall experience, and can they make some threes? Which side do you come down on here? Uh, so, <laughs> again, a lot of the stuff I talk to the stuff, people in town, some people that I know, some people that I respect are on North Carolina to win this whole tournament at plus 150 to 1 odds. Now, the guys that have it, they're great with this closing line value. They always get good numbers. And this one kid has never cashed one of these tickets. He gets close. He never cashes. He has North Carolina. I'm telling you, I like North Carolina in the game. And uh, Jacques has, I don't know if he's playing or not. I have no idea yet. He's probably going to try to play, right? He'll play. The line there's is, no way he's not playing. There's, he's playing. How effective? Don't know. Right. Two That's and a half question. is the spread. 141 and a half is the total has been painted since it opened. Anyone that was at two got to two and a half quick and it's been sitting there. I think the play is coming on North Carolina. I think when you saw them play Baylor, okay, you saw when they're going, they can run against a good defensive team that wants to slow it down and blah, blah, blah. And there was a call in that game that turned that whole game. Baylor came back. Talk about having that whew, survive and advance moment. That might have been North Carolina's. I, I'm telling you, I like North Carolina in the game, hence the hat. Plus, it's the only hat of any team that I got left in the tournament. I don't have no other hats. Um, so I'm all in with this one, at least for one more game. But I think North Carolina wins. I think the game goes over. Okay. I think UCLA will get caught up in trying to keep up with North Carolina. If North Carolina gets in foul trouble and can't dictate pace, game goes under. But I think I think we see this game. 
I'm surprised it was one, when I saw the number, I thought, oh, wow, this is really, this is lower than, this is a number that favors UCLA and them dictating the style of play. I thought this thing should have been 145, minimum maybe 147, and it's 141. Okay, maybe over adjusted. I don't know. You like, let me guess. You like, you don't know who you like. You've gone back and forth. I, I can't tell you who you like. You tell it's me. Ridic- you like. it's, it's ridiculous. I'm going to, I think I'm going to play Carolina. This is ridiculous. That's it. The fifth youngest team. They've won eight out of nine. They've only lost three times since January 22nd. I mean, they are playing well. Can it continue? I think I'm going to play that it does based on those reasons. Get out and run. That's an advantage. The two point jump shots advantage. I don't trust that Hawkes is going to be hundred percent. If he's not, that's a major, that's a major concern right there. Coaching that's a major matchup concern. in this. Does that have, do, do they yeah, cancel that's each what, other out? I mean, Cronin no, is I think, a great coach. I like Cronin. No, I like Cronin as a coaching advantage. So that's the thing. It's experience. It's pedigree. It's coaching on the UCLA side versus a team that is extremely hot, played very well, and has some on-court matchups. So I think this is a, I think I got to play Carolina pregame here. Newbie, listen. I know you like to go to the Sixers games. This game, these games are at the Wells Fargo Center. I'm just saying, if I was there, me and you would 100% would be going. If there's any chance that the girl, you, would ever get down there, you must, one, send a picture for everybody to see how styling and profiling you will probably be at the game. But two... You will have to tell people who you like. Yeah, <laughs> because bet the other side and bet the goddamn house on it. Anytime I'm in the Wells Fargo Center, whoever I want to win may get blown out by 50. There is a, there's a major possibility of that, even when it's a hockey game. Yeah, he's done this. He, he's I, know, I know he did. Poor newbie. Sickening. It's, it's scarred. It's, it was one game, newbie. Get back on the horse. Here oh. we go. Oh, I wish it was one game. You, you know that Hawks series, Mr. Brad Howe? I might be directly responsible for that last year. So so listen, so people listening or watching the show, stay tuned because if Doobie ends up at these games, I think you'll see under, and I think you'll see opposite of hopefully he's on the side of the team that you're going against because he has those powers. I don't know, B-How. I, I, I think this is going to be um, – I'm very excited to see both of these games at the Wells Fargo Center. I think there's two opposite type of games, obviously with St. Peter's and Purdue, and then North Carolina, UCLA. I'm leaning North Carolina right now. I think I am too, and I hate myself for it, but I'm going there. (laughs) Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, click on another video right here on the screen. And if you really liked it, consider subscribing below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.